Hello everyone. Very good evening to all of you. Welcome to the session on vocabulary and grammar. As part of your a series of sessions of the Zat Crash Course. All right. Tell us if you tell me if you can see me and hear me clearly, and then we can start the session. All right. Quickly give me a thumbs up if you can see me and hear me clearly. Those on the app and those on YT. All right. We have lots of questions to do, so I am going to start. If there, if you can't hear me, if you can't see me, let me know. But otherwise, just give me a thumbs up. All right. Now let's quickly look at the question pattern. You've done this. You know this. You get about three or four RC passages, generally four with three questions each. That makes it twelve questions. And then you have two poem comprehensions, uh, comprehension passages, two questions or three questions. Then you have a couple of critical reasoning questions, actually four to five, two para jumbles, fill in the blanks. You have two questions, one grammar based, preposition based and one vocabulary based, right? Then you have a contextual vocabulary, sometimes para completion, sometimes para completion comes as part of critical reasoning. All right. Uh, the reading comprehension passages are generally moderate. The others, all right, thank you, Shweta. The others are easy to moderate. Reading comprehension passages, the reason we call them moderate is that the options are slightly ambiguous. Sometimes the passages are difficult to read. The poems look difficult, but there's generally one question or two questions. Poems are very short, so do try to attempt the poems. They won't take you much time. All right. Today we are looking at grammar and vocabulary. So let's get on to grammar and vocabulary. Vocabulary in ZAT is generally tested through fill in the blanks questions where the correct usage of a word is tested. So it's not so much as your knowledge of a word. Some years it is just usage that is tested. Sometimes the options are based on commonly confused words. Today I have given you examples of both. All right, on, on, on fill in the blanks, which are just based on usage. Very easy words, amazing, profound, baffling, words like that. Or sometimes they're based on confusing words like epigraph, epita, epigram, uh, prostate, prostrate. So both would be. Uh, um, asked okay Brinda it depends on your strengths now gen generally we will be doing strategy sessions I know Gaurav has done a strategy session Gautam's going to be doing a strategy session it's it's a you you need to give 40 40 or 50 minutes to each section and then keep a buffer of 20 25 minutes 10 minutes whatever so you treat Let's say whatever. Do it in the order in which it appears and keep doing all the sitters. All right. Don't spend unduly long time on one passage or one question. All right. Okay. Now, in grammar, one question is based on prepositions. You get six uh, statements. All will have prepositions in it. Some are rightly used. Some are wrongly used. And then they tell you, okay, identify the set of the options which gives you a set of Correct sentences or set of wrong sentences. All right. The other one is in grammar is generally based on other errors. And they also are mostly idiomatic usage, sometimes subject verb agreement, sometimes tenses. One year it was only conditional sentences. One year it was only idiomatic usage. So you have to prepare. Your grammar preparation has to be thorough and comprehensive with particular focus on prepositions. Understood? So let's look at past year questions and questions patterned on past year papers. All right. Let's start with fill in the blanks. All right. Okay. The first one. Dash the importance of horizontal stratification. Dash higher education is wide. Attention has been applied to horizontal stratification. Dash compulsory schooling. Easy. 
read the entire sentence and then look at the options. Whereas the importance of horizontal stratification, while whereas both works, with higher education, horizontal stratification, with higher education, in or within makes more sense. That is how you have to eliminate option and eliminate options and move on. Which do you think is the right option? Quickly go through this. Give me your answers. A, B, C, D or E. Quickly give me your answers. What is the answer? Whereas and while both make sense. Whereas horizontal or maybe Vrinda, now you are saying last option not visible. Is my face coming in the way? Alright, somebody in the tech team will look at this. Last option is whereas about for less of. Can you see it now Vrinda? Whereas is the first word, about is the second, for left five options. D, uh, Jent thinks it's D, uh, while the importance of horizontal stratification on higher education. Do you talk of the importance of something on higher education, Jent and Vrinda? Importance of horizontal, importance of anything. On or with higher education, would you say? What is the option? What is the thing you would say? Importance of this in a particular area or for a particular. Therefore, the second option rules out D. Which one is the right answer now? It's all based on usage. There's no word here which is difficult. All right. Now you have a second chance. So what would be the answer? Not on. Influence of something on something, yes, but importance on something, no. So, what's the right answer? Right answer is B. Both sentences with within many times we have the same word in two options. While the importance of horizontal stratification within higher education is widely acknowledged, far less attention has been applied. To horizontal stratification within compulsory schooling. Now remember, further less attention, far less or further less. Further less if you are saying somewhere it must be more. Far fewer is wrong because you are talking of attention. You talk of fewer, you use a number. So they are testing your knowledge of prepositions. They are testing your knowledge of idioms. They are also testing your knowledge of determiners. Do you use fewer for attention? No. In within is the same. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Ready? Clear all of you? Okay. Let's look at the second question. This is patterned on an earlier paper. Something on monarchy picked up another one which was similar. It may be easy. So first read the sentence completely. When you read it, you get the intended meaning of the author. You also get a, an idea of the tone of the passage. Alright, then you start. Uh, it is lagging. There is something uh, only for you, then Shweta. No one else is complaining about lagging. Alright. Somebody in the tech team will look into it if more people complain. Alright. It may be easy to look at the monarchy today and assume its role is almost entirely dash. Almost entirely rubber stamp, ceremonial, titular, futile, crucial. Almost entirely what goes best with it. But kings and queens still exist tremendous social influence. Now, the moment you, there is but here, what does it mean? The word that comes, they still exert tremendous social influence. So, the word that you want here is something that goes, that is opposite of somebody having tremendous social influence. 
powerless, insignificant, a word similar to that. Especially as a dash of morality, especially as what of morality? Kings and queens today have tremendous social influence, especially as dash of morality. What are they seen as? Examples? What, what are they seen as? Models? Examples? Icons? Maybe. That was a role that King George III dash way back in the 18th century. So did he start it way back in the 18th century? To maintain their relevance. He knew oh, royal family ko relevant rena hai. So I have to do something of their influence as a dash of morality. Alright. To dash standards of proper behavior and stand by them. Let's quickly look at the options. Rubber stamp. But queens, kings and queens. Almost entirely rubber stamp. Can you say that? Does it make sense grammatically? To say his role is almost, he, you call a person a rubber stamp when he doesn't have power. But do you call a role a rubber stamp? Does it work? If it doesn't eliminate this option, move to the next. His role is almost entirely ceremonial. Naam ke liye, as a symbol, works. So B we can look at. His role is almost entirely titular, but kings and queens still exert tremendous social influence, especially as models of morality, B or C, both work. Exemplars, exemplars means examples, the best example, the most shining example. So both will work. Brokers of morality nahi hoga. So, between B, C and E, again C, their role is almost entirely crucial nahi hoga because the word we want here is opposite of someone who has tremendous social importance because of the use of the word but here. So, E goes, therefore, between B and C, which is the better one? I'm getting lots of answers for B, because he could not have instigated something way back in the 18th century. He would have started it. And the royal family was expected to establish. You don't say float. Float standards of proper behavior, you don't say. Establish. Put this in place. Okay? Therefore, the correct answer is B. Did everyone get it? Right? All right. Moving on. Third question, part of a proper that question, many students way back had got this, had made one mistake for one word. Now, what you need to do is again read the entire sentence. I'll read it with you with the blank so that you get the intended meaning and tone and then you look at the options. What makes it more difficult is the options are all given together and you have to choose sets of words. So, we read the set of words and the first one that works will work. Can you shift your video to the other side? Let me ask someone in my tech team to do that. Let me ask someone in my tech team to do that. Shift my video to the other side. All right. He will do that. All right, I'll ask him to shift my video to the other side. Next question, if it is on that side, we'll shift it to this side. All right, if I knew I would do it long back, Karthik. All right, but I'll read it for you. All right, Vrinda, we are doing it. Waiting for uh, Gaurav to set it right. Gaurav, Pankaj, one of them will set it right. All right, till then, let me read the question for you. 1942. In 1942, the French writer Albert Camus composed an essay, The Myth of Sisyphus. It draws the Greek fable of a man condemned to roll a rock, you know what is known as a Sisyphean task, a never-ending task, because Sisyphus had the punishment to roll a rock up a mountain, and that mountain had such a sharp pointed a small precipice that the rock would eventually it had to balance on the top but because it didn't have 
there was no space for it it would roll back and his punishment was uh, when the rock balances your punishment is done you need to put that rock up there and then you are you are fine so he has to keep rolling it up and ensure the rock doesn't fall down and so it's an unending punishment all right so a greek fable of a man condemned to roll a rock up a mountain only to have it roll back down under its own own weight a dash that lasts for eternity camu argues that this image dash the human condition it symbolizes shows something like that in a world where we can no longer make sense of events but instead of committing suicide we should dash ourselves to this we should dash ourselves to this look at this the word here has to grammatically fit with this to this elusive feeling of absurdity and bear it as best as we can in this sense sisyphus is the ideal hero the words we have is you're rolling a stone up only to a rock up a mountain only to have it roll back so this cannot be a form of surrender if i knew i would know one sec i'm so it cannot be a surrender that lasts for eternity it cannot be a choice you didn't make a choice to have the rock roll back it cannot be a symbolizes that lasts for eternity but it can be a quandary a quandary is a problem okay therefore four will be our first option options a and e have four now from a and e let's decide if what is the best word for of the second blank so here it is for quandary that lasts for eternity a problem that lasts for eternity kemu argues that this image dash the human condition could be symbolizes three or could be depicts eight okay now there is only one option or three options start with four c also but 8 has not been given so 3 would go here therefore it would be 4 3 7 and that is option e let me again ask uh, uh, that they change it okay let me ask them to change it to the yes all right next question i'm hoping somebody on the tech team is listening to me and would come and help shift my picture to the other side all right Let's look at fill in the blanks based on confused words. All right? He is the most eminent imminent imminent of speakers to address us today. Is it I'll give you the words in the first for the first blank. Is it eminent? Is it imminent? Or those are the two options so what would you say he is the most he is the most eminent or imminent of uh, speakers what is the meaning of eminent what is the meaning of imminent and what is the meaning of imminent these are the three things you need to know eminent means famous note somebody who is very well known imminent is something which is impending likely to happen very soon 
Immanent is something which is inherent, inborn. Now tell me which is the right set of uh, words. Imminent, eminent, imminent, immanent and eminence. All right. Uh, option A says eminent, imminent, immanent and eminence. He is the most dash of all speakers today. One minute. All right, guys, give me two minutes. Let them set my camera to the other side. And then you can see all the options. All right, just give me five minutes, two minutes, not even five. All right. All good? Now, now my ugly face is not sitting like a block on and you can't see the options. You, all of you can see all the options now. Give me a yes and then let's start. What is the right option here for this question? What is the right option for this question? Which is the right one? You have to see all the words. There are four sentences. He is the most dash of the speakers. The belief in dash justice is the essence of his talk. This hall would have been full but for the dash rain. Many in the audience have achieved dash in their respective fields. All four in the right order has been given in which of the options? Let us see. First one is eminent. That means options A, C and D are there. Rule out options B and E. Okay. For the second option, the belief in dash justice. The belief in what justice? The belief in what justice is the essence of his talk? The belief in imminent justice. Milega, it has to be there. All right. So, this will be imminent. This will be imminent. The rain, imminent, inherent. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Imminent, inherent. Okay, the belief in imminent justice, inherent justice is the essence of his talk. This hall would have been full but for the rain which will definitely come. And good evening, Aditya, good evening. Many in the audience have achieved fame in their fields. Therefore, the correct answer is option C. All right. So you could get questions like that, whereas while within in or you could get something asking you eminent, imminent, imminent, inherent or affect is a verb. All right. Affected one means uh, uh, being influenced or, uh, uh, you know, bearing the impact of something. The other meaning, there is another meaning when you say she affected an accent as here. It means you put on an accent. So I've given you only one clue that last uh, option may affected hoga. When you put on an accent, let's say I st start telling you the suspension of the caption means so oh, I keep speaking. Itna accent kyu mar rahi hai? That is speaking with an affected accent or I am affecting an accent. I am trying to speak with a false accent. Uh that the problem for everybody on on the app is that the problem for everybody is this on the app or yt manali is this only for you kartik kartik rohini are you able to see me and hear me are you able to see kartik and other shweta kartik and all is this, are you watching it on YT or app?
let let me again tell them to to set that right um but the internet is working fine all right let's let, let them set it right if you can at least hear me let's start dono jagah lag kar raha hai lekin yahan pe to internet kaam kar raha hai theek se kaam kar raha hai just seen the speed all right so the suspension of the captain the suspension of the captain may affect or affect the number of spectators what's the word you want may you want a verb here so it will be may affect all right they are setting it right let me just continue with the question we've got 25 questions to do all right so the suspension of the captain may affect next one transportation cost will directly have an influence so effect we need others advancing age could affect her ability if affect her ability to take care of the house all right so answer is and she spoke this is a and affected all right so the answer for 5 is c this and this are not the same this second one is wrong in b all right so the question is c b has one wrong effect here you need effect not affect okay remember effect is a verb affect effect is a noun affect is a verb and then he brought about changes when you want to say you can say he effected many changes in the economy that is correct all right okay question 6 he was a man of equable or equitable temperament and never lost his cool what's the word i want a or b what is the difference between equable and equitable you normally use the word equitable to mean just or fair equitable means more or less uniform no great ups and downs so when you are talking of temperament what is the word you want he is a man of what kind of temperament never loses his school never loses his temper so he is a man of equable temperament all right okay question 7 the area is known for its dense and luxurious or luxuriant vegetation what is the word perfect perfect a is the answer for 6 let's move on to 7 the area is known for its dense and what is the word you would use to describe it please give the question number jigyasa ragul all right because uh, okay one second um please give the question number and there may be a slight break when our tech team is trying to set everything right uh, trying to see if that lag can be can be rectified all right uh, so there will be a break in the session just give us a couple of minutes all right when you answer please answer using the question number that some reason the video is lagging today yeah yeah both on the app and on yt so some issue is there
All right. Can you see me and hear me now? Clearly. All right. Luxurious means affluent. Luxuriant means oh, what happened? Okay, hold on. Ah, I got. Luxuriant means dense, abundant, lush. So the word we want is B. All right. I hope uh, you guys can see Shweta, Manali, and all. I hope you can see. Now they've set it right. All right. Next. Today, today in Snap also they asked this question. Uh, they gave a proverb: uh, "Fools rush in where angels fear to tread," and they asked. Uh, what kind of figure of speech is this? So, any witty saying that is used generally as a quote in a book, as a heading uh, of a chapter, is called an epigram. All right. So, imagination is more important than knowledge. Is a quote. It's a clever kind of saying. So, this is an example of an epigram or an epitaph. Now, you have three words starting with epi. Epigram. Epigraph. And epitaph. All right. Any witty saying is an epigram. Epigrams are used as epigraphs when they are used in buildings or on, on pictures or used as uh, inscriptions on some wall. All right. And when it is used on a gravestone, it's called an epitaph. All right. So this imagination is more important than knowledge is an example of an epigram. The next question, you will get it easily. Epigraphs or epitaphs are very similar to epigrams. Dash are often found. So, what is the word I want here? And what is the word I found here? So, you can give me answer A, B, A, A, B, 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 A. What is the correct combination? Dash are very similar to epigrams, epigraphs or epitaphs. Epigraphs or epigrams are found on buildings, monuments, at the beginning of books, chapters or other sections of writing. Question 9. Answer for both is A. All right, epigram or epigraphs can be found on books, but epigraphs are similar to epigrams in that they have to be inscribed on something. Got it? A witty saying is an epigram. When that is inscribed on a building, on a monument, or it is inscribed in a book, then it's called an epigram. Clear? Excellent. Okay, next question. Uh, a past year ZAT question. A candidate in the medical viva exam, uh, oral examination, faced a tinge of intellectual dash when he was asked to spell dash gland. The fact that he carried notes on his person would definitely be termed as dash by the faculty but may be termed as dash by more generous sections of students. So, there was a candidate in a medical oral exam, a doctor or an aspiring doctor or a doctor in training and he had an intellectual dash. Why? Because he was asked to spell some gland's name. Here we have. What did he face? Intellectual what? ambivalence or ambiguity. Why? Because he had notes and if he had referred to the notes, he would have got the correct spelling of this gland. Okay? But if he had referred to his notes, it would be treated as dash by his faculty 
but his friends may call it something else. So what is the combination of words I want? Ambivalence, prostrate, immoral, amoral. Ambivalence, prostrate, amoral and immoral. Ambiguity, prostrate, amoral and immoral. Or, so I've got answers for 10E from Vrinda. What about the others? Ambiguity means having a double meaning or something which is unclear. When you are torn between two opposing uh, conflicting actions or, or uh, impulses, that is called ambivalence. Valence means movement. So he is facing an intellectual ambivalence, no ambiguity. There is no confusion. Should I look at it or not? I would, if I look at my notes, it would be cheating, that is wrong. So there is a, there is the, the angel and the devil in him. All right. If you apply, applied, why not you write? Why don't you write? XLRI is as good an institute as any. It's considered among the top level institutes. So why not? Please write. You've applied, write. Or you can apply now, there's still time, then of course write it. I would always say write. Okay? All right. So ambivalence is the word we want. We uh, eliminate C and E. Then, okay, let's say, you know, there is a, a just lying down on the ground with your face down. That's called prostrate yourself before the gods. You just go flat on the gland. The name of the gland though does not have an R. Alright. So now your answer becomes very clear. Teachers will consider it immoral. Wrong. But your friends would say, ah, this is koi galti nahi hai. It's neither correct nor wrong. That is immoral. Friends will connect, consider it immoral. Amoral, but a teacher will never consider an act of cheating immoral. They would definitely say it's immoral. All right. So based on that, the correct answer is A. He faced an in intellectual ambivalence. He was torn between the desire to refer to his notes and, or to be honest. Because he had to spell the prostate grand, not prostrate when you lie flat on the ground, that's called prostrated himself on the ground. Teachers would consider, the faculty would consider it immoral, but his friends may not say it's immoral. They may say it is neither moral nor immoral, immoral. They don't have a view on it. All right, so the answer is A. All right, we've done lots of confusing words, confused words. Let's quickly look later at some of the other ones. Now let's go to grammar. All right. So if you get uh, fill in the blanks, try to understand the meaning. You will get one question on fill in the blanks, either the first type or the second type. Now let's quickly look at grammar. Vikram's approach to the problem was unique from Harpreet's and he hadn't expected no criticism from her. When you are given five sentences which have only some uh, some differences. Read the first sentence and try to under, uh, identify the mistakes here itself. Is unique from correct? If you think it isn't, look for the other. He hadn't expected no criticism. Is that correct? If not, then look for the next one. All right. Vikram's approach to the problem was different from Harpreet's, but he hadn't expected no criticism. Different from, unique from. Which is better? Hadn't expected or had expected? Hadn't expected, no criticism. Double negative nahi ho raha. Will you say, I hadn't expected, no criticism. I had expected, no answer. Hadn't expected, an answer. This negative, I, he hadn't expected, any criticism is correct. Hadn't expected, no criticism is a double negative, not correct. Not correct. Therefore, had expected no criticism. 
all right different from is the correct expression and hadn't expected no is double negative so therefore had expect become supposed to problem was different from this is also correct and e is not correct because of the wrong conjunction it was different yet but even though it is different he didn't expect her to criticize him so but has to be the correct conjunction not not e those of you who marked e e has the wrong conjunction in place it's not and even though uh, my opinion is different i don't expect any criticism so not and but all right okay next question it's a question of correlative conjunctions things that always go together between if you have between has to be followed by and right when you start the sentence with though and although you do not pair it with a yet right it it rained so much that okay collocations they always go together not only generally fall is followed by but also in some cases you can have a plus but only the not only and the placement of not only and but also is also important if you place it in the wrong place the sentence is considered wrong so make sure you position it right and make sure not only not only is followed by but also so which sentence has that Question twelve. I want to join an MBA college that is not only the best in the country but also provides the best campus jobs. I want to join an MBA college that is not only the best in the college but also I can get a job. I want to join an MBA college that is not only the best in the country but not hurt but also best in job. Wrong English. that is not only good but also i can get good job okay so the only one which has the parallel construction and logical construction is a excellent okay next one quickly i need to all right which one is grammatically correct remember there are three four rules you need to know when you are doing punctuation for that know the importance of comma a uh, semicolon colon quotes and apostrophe these are the five you need to know all right when you join a main clause a sentence in a sentence when you have a part of the sentence that can stand alone without anything else to complete its meaning that's called the main clause okay when you are joining a main clause with another clause which gives the reason for the action or something else then you need to have a conjunction a word there which joins to but when you are joining two main clauses you use certain conjunctions all right when you use a now remember is therefore a conjunction therefore is an adverb so our task has become very easy chatterjee loves books full sentence semicolon therefore he reads them all the time complete sentence fine he loves books full stop this becomes a sentence in itself therefore he reads them all the time this is another sentence in itself perfectly fine he loves books and so you are joining it with a coordinating conjunction and then you are setting it off with because of that he reads them all the time so all three are correct option e is the right answer just remember comma semicolon colon quotation marks and apostrophe know the use of these five all right question 14 use of prepositions all right uh, or uh, i've i've actually mixed up both prepositions and usage questions all right people are immature and often quarrel on petty issues which part of the sentence has an error they'll give you five sentences but you just have to identify if the sentence has an error or not here you tell me which part of the sentence has an error people are immature and 
which one becomes redundant it's only a question of punctuation here there is no redundancy he's not asking here you are giving a reason for something happening so there is no redundancy he loves it and that is the reason he reads books all the time all right all right next people are immature and often quarrel on petty issues which part of the sentence has an error ha and therefore so you are joining two main clauses there is no redundancy you it is your wish you want to break it up into two clauses independent clauses then you put a semicolon and say it but here you want to mix it and put it as one sentence so you are using the coordinating conjunction that is and you are showing both are important and just giving it so there's no redundancy there redundancy is unnecessary repetition all right here all we are doing is changing the structure instead of having two sentences or two clauses we just jo joining it into one sentence all right okay what is the part with the error no error no error okay there is an error you quarrel over petty issues not quarrel on you quarrel over something all right so the wrong option is c part c has the error all right next one you are required to comply with the instructions given to you is this sentence correct or wrong i am told that not many people have pressed the like button please go ahead and do it technical glitches are not in my hand you see how techn technically challenged i am i did not even know how to shift my camera from the left to the right side all right many do it themselves i couldn't do it so i am only here if you like the questions if you think you are learning a little bit of grammar and vocabulary then go on go ahead and press like all right okay you are required to comply with the instructions given to you a b c d or no error e quickly i have a class at 9:15 i i mean i asked for i told the students that i'll be starting the class 15 minutes late it should start actually at 9 quick 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 i want to see the answers for question 15 you are required to comply with the instructions given to you why is it d uh, jigyasa there is no error comply with is correct so there is no error answer is e all right next comply with is the correct expression he thought he could say any unpleasant things about me behind my back and get along with it any part of the sentence in 16 has an error which part or no error e which part of the sentence has an error if no error is there please mark e give me the question number okay friends question number along with your answer all right uh all right rahul how would you correct it if d is the error rahul thinks uh, 16 not 15 sorry 16 16 if you think d has an error how would you correct it 16 d is indeed the correct answer what is how would you correct it you can't say things behind my back and get away with it perfect all right okay question 17 the class went on for such a long time like now that the students fell asleep on their desks the class went on and on sabko neend aa gaya so what will you say the class went on for such a long time why is b wrong uh, girish in 16 get away yeah not get along all right good question 17 so when you know the error please write the correction also i mean what do you think would be the right usage uh, what is the error in 17 or no error is there an error the class went on for such a long time that the students fell asleep on their desks Uh, 
17 C B all right any other answers No, no, we are talking in the past tense. No, Vrinda, the class went on. We are talking of a past tense. It went on for such a long time that the students fell asleep is fine. Tense ka error to nahi hai isme. Am I sitting on my desk and teaching you or am I sitting at my desk and teaching you? So, students didn't climb on their desks and sleep when the class happened, unless it's an online class. The students fell asleep at their desk. You have dinner at the dining table. Alright, so it is at, not on. Got it? Unless they climbed onto the tables and decided to make it a bed. Alright? And that's, that is not the intention. The intention is when you are sitting, you doze down. All right, question 18. With little patience, you will be able to do well in the comprehension section, which is what I always say. Your errors in comprehension is because you are nervous and you read too fast. 18. Is anything wrong with 18 or no error? Uh, 18A, Manjit, how and why? What is the correct answer? Shreyan says A, why? How would I correct it? Quickly. Uh, with a little patience means no patience. Thoda sa. When I am saying little bit, it should be with a little patience. Not with little patience. Little means... He has little patience for these things. Okay. A little means a small amount. So if you have a small amount of patience, that is enough to tide over the comprehension section. So here the article is missing. Got it? Excellent. All right. When I'll get back from the United States, I'll pay off the money that I borrowed from you. This was a past year MHCET question. I think I've used it a lot of times. When I get, when I'll get back from the United States, I'll pay off the money that I borrowed from you. Okay, correct it for me, Shreyans. Pay off, pay back, both are correct. That is not the error. What is the error? This is not required. Alright. When I get back. Perfect. Alright. So A. When I get back. Not when I will get back. When I get back from the US, I will do this. The if and when clauses do not take a will in it. Okay. None of the students have turned up for the class. Question 20. None of the students have turned up for the class. Perfect. Excellent. None of the students have turned up for the class. Uh, question 20. Please give me the question number. That, I mean, I'm taking a while to see this. Yeah, 19 we got it. Now 20. What's the correct answer for 20? None of the students have turned up for the class. Uh, I'm seeing A and E, two answers. None of the student nahi hoga. None of the students is correct. No student has turned up for the class. None of the students is correct, so there is no error. Alright? No student has, none of the students have. Alright? No, no, no. S has to be there. Students, none of the students. Alright? Okay. 
Next one, question 21. Doctors keep telling people that walking is the best exercise and is conducive for good health. Doctors keep telling people that walking is the best exercise and is conducive for good health. 21. 20 is E, no error. The sentence is correct as it is. What is the answer for 21? Doctors keep telling people that walking is the best exercise and is conducive for good health. What is the correct answer or no error? Is the sentence fine? How, how would you correct it? Oh, just we, how would you correct it? If it is D, what is wrong with D? How would you correct it? Girish thinks it's E21. How would you correct it? Uh, oh, just we, how would you correct it? Huh, Jigyasa, correct it. All those who said D has the error, correct it for me. How would you correct it? What is the correct preposition? Vrinda, Ojusvi, conducive to. No is required. No, no, no. Is is required. And conducive to good health, not for. All right. All right. Now, in some, you, you. 22, I want you to read the sentence properly and tell me. Is this correct? 1. Okay. Demanded that the dismissed worker should. 3. three. I want you to pay attention to these 3 points and tell me uh, which part here is wrong. Okay. That's I have also pointed out the areas where you should be looking for the error. Tell me. Which one is correct out of this? Uh, again, OJSV YD in 22. Oh, just we, in 22. Alright. When I say this, if it's A, I am saying the union belongs to only one worker. Here, I am not saying this. it's a union of workers. This is only a plural. So, actually, this is correct. What is wrong? Demanded that. What did they demand? So I need that here. Now, when you have words like demanded that, suggested that, asked that, certain verbs with that, this is called when, when clauses start with that, we call it a noun clause. When you have verbs like demanded, suggested, asked, pleaded, requested, Followed by that, they say that the verb that you use should be in subjunctive form. That means you should not use the P, should here. So it will be the workers union demanded that the dismissed worker be reinstated. The kidnappers demanded that the ransom be paid in cash. Should, should not be used. Okay. I will explain this again in the next lesson of grammar questions because it requires a slightly longer explanation. Alright, let's see how good you are at figures of speech. This is again a past year ZAT question. Alright, uh, we have two more questions and it's already 9 o'clock. Alright, which sentence includes a euphemism? What's a euphemism? A gentler way of saying something. Alright. A more, a pleasanter way of expressing something. Alright. Must is different. 
you don't use must then you don't use demanded that form oh just we the the uh, don't use should or must nothing just be reinstated i will explain the subjunctive form in the next grammar uh, class of uh, the crash course all right so which one here has a pleasant expression for a harsh word or something that you think would influence people cell phone networks are weak in hilly areas bottled water is reputed to be safe a cemetery is a place where people are buried when they pass away pass away is a euphemism for dying therefore the correct answer is c good next one wit of the following contains a non sequitur what's a non sequitur one which is not logical cannot be deduced it doesn't follow reason is not reasonable a if a happens then b happens then it has to logically be deduced so which one here goes against your logic quickly if statisticians are made judges they'll accept or reject arguments based on probability analysis sounds reasonable you make statistics statisticians the judges they will obviously use probability for everything reasonable rational public trust in politicians is at an all time low people don't trust politicians anymore we can't insist that the politicians go back to school go back to their basics so if their trust is an all at an all time low why can't you do that so this is not the logical thing that follows this therefore the answer is b all right last question of the set which sentence includes an oxymoron what's an oxymoron two two words two expressions which seem to contradict each other all right when they put together like true lies is an oxymoron all right so which one here is an oxymoron over the weekend we ate and drank a lot meena corrected me by pointing out that she wanted pizza instead of burger media reported the attack on media persons he loved his aunt but found her kindness suffocating yes d is the correct answer all right i hope you had a quick refresher course on grammar and vocabulary stay tuned every day for the next 4 5 days at 7 pm we have a uh, classes by navin shrinivas and i'll be taking essay writing basics on wednesday all right enroll now for our omet courses and join us for zat detailed analysis on january 7th all right we'll see you again very soon in another yt session in a classroom or in some session until then study hard and we are there to explain any doubts